Hello and welcome to this presentation on how runtime virtual textures can be used like render targets with persisting data between frames. First we'll start off with a demonstration. So I have this object that draws to the plane and the previous stuff drawn to it still remains between frames. and there's no artifacting issues that occur. So, runtime virtual textures allows for materials to be drawn to a virtual texture at runtime, where location, rotation and scale are already factored into the drawing process. A material could draw to the runtime virtual texture and another material will be able to sample that texture. So we have a material that will output a shape to the runtime virtual texture, which another material can then utilize uh, as its output. By default, a runtime virtual texture has the option Enable Clear Before Render set to True. This means that every time the virtual texture gets rendered, it would clear the previous data it had stored. This meant that an object with a material that draws to the runtime virtual texture could move around freely and not leave any trails behind. So each time it gets rendered, the runtime virtual texture has its data cleared, and then a new object can draw to it. Using this method, to have data be stored in the runtime virtual texture and never get removed, an approach would be to keep the objects that draw to the runtime virtual texture active in the scene at all times. This, however, means more polygons are in use in the scene, which can add to performance cost in some cases. So what happens when we disable the clear before render option? Here's an example. And there's some obvious uh, artifacts with the way runtime virtual textures use their tiling system. So the data still remained and the new data was added, but there were some obvious artifacts occurring due to the way it makes use of tiles. Increasing the tile size did slightly improve this result, but they're still visible. And when we get close, there's a weird transition between the different tiles. To solve the tile issue, a second runtime virtual texture was used. This adds to the performance cost, so be careful where you use this solution. This new runtime virtual texture will receive the result of the runtime virtual texture that persists the data. So, we have a shape that we want to draw with a draw material. It will draw to the persistent runtime virtual texture, which has the option Enable Clear Before Render set to false. Uh, then an object will display this data. Uh, as we've just seen, it will have the t issues with the tiles. But then that output will then get drawn to this new runtime virtual texture which has Enable Clear Before Render set to True. Here is the material for receiving the persistent runtime virtual texture, then drawing that result to the persistent capture runtime virtual texture. Here is the material for receiving the persistent runtime virtual texture, then drawing that result to the persistent capture runtime virtual texture. And the persistent capture is the final output of this material. As mentioned before, this adds to the material cost. So there's been uh, four estimated texture lookups and two texture stacks. Since there were now two runtime virtual texture volumes in the scene, only the first runtime virtual texture updated when a change happened, which is the persistent runtime virtual texture. This was because the object drawing to the runtime virtual texture only applied to the persistent runtime virtual texture. So by adding a second draw slot in its render to virtual texture array, both volumes would update each runtime virtual texture. This will mean, however, that the new frame that gets rendered will render the same thing to both of the runtime virtual textures. So we have the shape that we want to draw that gets rendered to the persistent runtime virtual texture, 
the complete result of that will then get rendered to the capture runtime virtual texture but then since we also have uh, this setting enabled the shape gets drawn over the top of that but it's only uh, the new shape in that current frame not all the previous data so we're adding this new shape onto the previous data which also includes that shape we just drew. The object that displays the output will also need to draw to the persistent capture runtime virtual texture. And now I'll show you a step-by-step -step setup for getting this working. Okay, so we'll start off by making our runtime virtual textures. First make our persistent one. Make sure to turn off the enable clear before render option and I'll increase the tile size and making the capture of that one just persist capture next I'll start by making uh, the shape to draw constantly to our runtime virtual texture for this I'll just use a radial gradient exponential Uh, next I'll set up the receiver material which will also draw to the persistent capture. So first we'll sample our persistent one and we'll also output that. Next I'll also sample the capture which will become our final output of this material. So yeah, this one up here is the persistent one, and this one down here is the capture. Right, next I'll drag in uh, all the elements for the scene. So here's a big plane. Make sure it has the receiver material, and make sure it's virtual texture and main pass, as we want to draw to the virtual textures as well as show what it looks like as the final product. I'll then start by putting the persistent in the first slot and the capture one in the second. Uh, next I'll add in the plane which we'll use to uh, harness the draw material on. I won't cast a shadow for it and it will just draw to the persistent runtime virtual texture and we only need this one to draw to the virtual texture only. Uh, I'll also make it movable so I can play around with it at runtime. Next I'll add in our volumes and I'll scale this one up by 1000 on the X and Y axis and 250 on the Z. So this first one will just capture our persistent and to get it to work at runtime I'll convert it to a blueprint. Next I'll make our capture, same scale for this one, and it will uh, receive the persistent capture, and I'll convert this one to a blueprint as well. Finally, the last step is to make sure that the object that will uh, draw our shape to it also has the fact that it's drawing to the persistent capture. So now when we select this at runtime in the editor, we can start drawing things onto it. And when we zoom in close, there's no artifacts occurring. We don't get that tile issue anymore. The reason that there's a border there is just because my runtime virtual texture volumes don't cover that area. If I was to change it, there they go. And so there was a little bit of tiling issues there, but it seems to have gone away since we've drawn over it now. <laughs> 